My name is Erwin Chen. I am the founder of Redub LLC, which is an interaction design consulting agency in New York. I come in to um, projects and help companies and people and startups go from requirements from an idea to uh, actually translating that into um, specifications, um, wireframes, and, um, and even prototyping to bring those ideas closer to um, an actual product. It's strategic and it's also uh, planning and, and it's also um, conceptual and design related. At MIT, these guys were developing this substrate that you know produced a film that was that could refresh and change, but it was it was a stable reflective medium, and it was it was it was just a sheet. You know, like a, there was like a sheet of you know, it was, I, they, people thought it was going to be used for advertising and you know like refresh uh, displays on you know on billboards or whatever or s s smaller things. But, and then when they started applying it to e-readers, to little devices, um, it, seemed, it seemed like a perfect marriage, but I think the ultimate problems that I had with it were um, the refresh rate, um, meaning like when you turn a page, it, you could, it feels clunky, it feels like there's something, it feels like, you know, inelegant. Um, I also felt like, the attention to typography was was kind of lost. I mean, or not fully realized. So I feel like that's a big. I'm mean, just from a design standpoint. I think, you know, if some of the top typographers today were h hired by Amazon, um, I think I would be really excited. Um, and I think a lot of people would see the benefits of that. I mean, to a lot of people, that matters. And but actually, there's the flip side to it is, you know, if you look at the sub, if you go on the subway now, you can see tons of people reading Kindles, and they have no problem. They're totally engrossed, and it works perfectly for them. And um, and they they will, may prove me wrong that the Kindle is like a, a trans. I I see the Kindle as like a transitional device. Uh, but when you get to the iPad, the possibility, you could do the same thing, but the possibilities are much greater. And uh, a lot of publishers are trying a lot of experiments. They're actually trying to rethink their material and their content for the iPad to take advantage of the iPad. So if you look at um, Our Choice, which was Al Gore's um, book about global warming, um, they, the, I, know, I know the publisher and the editor who worked on it, they committed to doing a version on the iPad that was meant, that took advantage of everything that the iPad did. They used, um, the, they used you know, pinching and zooming, they used, they, they created, there was tons of in opportunity for interactive um, like interactive visualizations of graphs and data. Um, they, were, they even used the microphone that, um, on iPad 2 where you, if you blew into it, it would spin this turbine which taught you about you know, electric, um, wind, wind powered electricity generation. Um, they, they did everything. They, they rethought the book from, really they re-engineered specifically the book for that, uh, the content for that medium. What the iPad has done, and really you could have to say the iPhone before it, it introduces a new paradigm for interacting with um, computers. And it's, it seems really simple, it seems really dumb that you use your finger, but actually what we've come from is getting used to using this keyboard with a weird layout and using this like mouse Thing to control this other thing on a screen, and if you think about it, that's actually pretty. Peop, that's actually pretty daunting for a lot of people, or it's it takes people time to learn that system. If you put a 
tablet, uh, iPad, or an iPhone in front of a baby, which I've done, they immediately know how to use it. It's not like they have to like learn how the alphabet works, learn how to type, and learn how to use a mouse. Like they just start using it, and that's I think a pretty big interface um, revolution and from a, a creative standpoint it opens up a huge realm of possibilities. I mean, Smule is a developer that they've developed the accordion, they've used the, they have a piano, um, they do like musical instruments that are, that are connected to each other. Um, that's a really fascinating uh, thing. Um, the painting programs that are out there are really spectacular. There's, they're amazing and people are doing incredible things with them. Um, in ways I think that, I think, you know, sitting behind a computer with a mouse is, is you know, m makes it feel more like work. Um, and I think that's, that's the big change, is that if you look at where, I think there's, there's studies that are done on where iPads are used. They're, they f they're used outside of the nine to five arena, and, and actually increasingly more so in the, in, during work, but you know, like I didn't bring my iPad today because my wife uses it now as a, as a kind of, as her computer. And I got one for my mother and, you know, and actually this, just this morning, my son figured out how to turn it on and type in my password and open it and do the swipe action. And, and he's like, not even two yet. And so like that really tells you a lot about what, what it's doing to computing, it's changing. It's really like uh, I think it's it's in some ways it's taking the computer out of this realm of work and job and um, labor, and it's putting it into a kind of more life um, realm where it's 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 in part of your, it's, it's in every day of your life, of every part, it could potentially be in every part of your life because of the way apps can be written and take advantage of situations that are not just typing numbers into a spreadsheet or typing words into a, you know, um, screen. If you saw the last keynote from Apple, from Steve Jobs, they're all talking about the post-PC world and, um, and the iPad sort of tablet revolution. Um, and, and I heard a really great analogy, which was that um, the iPad is like a microwave and a PC is like, a, a, or your regular computer is like a, an oven. So we're, the microwave, when it came out, remember, if you remember when it came out, it was, the microwave was like uh, this, they, they tried to use it for everything, right? They tried to cook like turkeys in, in it, or they tried to bake things in it, or it, but they, it took them a few years to realize that microwave is really good for popping popcorn and reheating your leftovers and thawing, defrosting food, and they're perfectly happy with it just doing those things. It does them really well. And the iPad is really good at a few things. It's good at cert certain things, and we're just now trying to figure those things out. Like, we're trying to figure out what the iPad is good for. Is it good for business? I don't know. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Some situations it is, sometimes it's not. Um, and, and the computer is really good for certain things like, you know, creating, uh, you know, 3D things or doing precision work, doing, um, you know, tasks and daily things, uh, work related things. And so it's, it's really good for those things and I don't want to replace it with an iPad.